Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined, as always, by the human suplex machine, Taz. We are diving right in. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Accompanied to the ring by the Varsity Blondes from Bloomington, Minnesota, Julia Hart. Taz, Julia Hart set to kick things off here on our broadcast, and it seems like. Uh, Ever since that black mist was blown into her eyes, things not going so swimmingly for Julia and the Varsity Blondes. Let's throw it back down to Tasha real quick. Her opponent already in the ring from Tampa, Florida, Kelsey Heather. Well, no, to your point, I mean, Brian Pillman popped up on the apron that to be a gentleman and helped Julia Hart into the ring, and she's like, I'm good, I got it. Well, I mean, if you think back to when uh, Julia challenged Griff, or excuse me, not, she did not challenge Griff Garrison. She challenged Jade Cargill in the, for the TBS Championship. She said she didn't need any help from Griff. She didn't need Griff to fight her battles for her. I remember that on Dynamite, yelled at him, yelled at Griff. Uh, basically, uh, just went off on him. And, you know, I mean, maybe she should have listened to Griff. But you know what? I, I like the gumption of Julia Hart. She's got a lot of heart, no pun intended. She's a tough young lady, a two-time national champion cheerleader athlete. That's impressive. Two time. As Two time. Kelsey, Kelsey Heather takes the side headlock. <laughs> Julia sends her into the rose one for the trip. Julia comes back. Whoop, oh, hip oh. toss. <laughs> All right. Kelsey Heather. Toss Jones right there. See that? <laughs> <laughs> what the? All Up right. Kicks by Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey oh. Heather. Oh, drop told into the <laughs> ropes. And now. <laughs> Julia, oh, just taking a, a seat on the back of Kelsey Heather's head. And referee Mike Posey, as usual, jumped in a little bit early with the count. Never fails. <laughs> Never fails. Is this, is this the week where you go after Posey? No. Well, I'll tell you about that Remsburg. Sick of him. The other ref. What do you think you want, Oh, your travel hasn't been screwed up enough? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, Julia Hart showing Kelsey. Well, you know what? I got something for you. Julia Hart and a big series of shots in the corner. Mike Posey. We're seeing a lot of lot of fire out of Julia Hart. Oh, I agree. Whoa, what the? Flapjack. It's a hard landing. There we go. Julia Hart, the backflip. Moonsault onto the back of Kelsey Heather. Julia sends Kelsey into the corner. The hand spring and the lariat. Julia Hart. She's not done. Nope. Coming in big uppercut. And there we go. Now splits out with the bulldog. Julia. Oh, she's got her. Oh, Ju Julia Hart. Look at this. The leg scissors. And Kelsey Heather, no choice but to tap out. Your winner by submission, Julia Hart. Well, Julia Hart, despite the eye patch, still able to pick up the victory to kick us off here tonight on AEW Dark. Well, she shifted into another gear there with that intensity, Excalibur, big time. And the Varsity Blondes' quizzical looks left on their faces. Here on AEW Dark, Powerhouse Hobbs representing Team Taz in action next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from East Palo Alto, California, weighing 270 pounds, Power House Hall. And before we dive into this match, AEW Music presents Who We Are, a celebration of excellence, volume one, available for pre-order right now at shopaew.com. 
His opponent already in the ring, Gus De La Vega. And the proceeds benefit the Bootsy Collins Foundation, but Powerhouse Hobbs just laying out Gus De La Vega. And Gus De La Vega's foundation just got destroyed by my man, Powerhouse Hobbs. The big power of Team Tags, FT Dub Stop, baby. Oh. <laughs> De La Vega just got squashed in the ropes at Powerhouse Hobbs. In firm control of his opponent, Taz, this past Friday night on Rampage, we saw Ricky Starks retain the FTW championship, but we also saw this rivalry between Dante Martin and Powerhouse Hobbs, and actually all of Team Taz just continue to burn. Well, uh, listen, Dante Martin, obviously, you know, look, um, I I'm glad that we threw him out of Team Taz, I'll be honest with you, because I would have had buyer's remorse, I'll be honest. So. Hobbs is going to take care of business with Gustavo here, just like he's going to do to uh, Dante. No, 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 no. no. Oh, big overhand sledge. And maybe a little bit of revisionist history on your part, Taz. I don't recall you kicking Dante Martin out of Team Taz. Well, it's uh, mixed emotions of part, the, uh, part of the Dynaflow of the oh, even flow. So that's what happens when that happens. All right. Oh, Taylor Vega <laughs> sent crashing to the outside. And Powerhouse Hobbs stalking his prey. He's, 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 oh, 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 oh. Love it. Bring the intensity, yeah, the power. Yeah, Gustavo. What's going on, my man? You getting beat up? He just got trucked. What happens? Hobbs returns. Where's Dante? Returns De La Vega oh. to the ring. Oh. And De La Vega, man. Hobbs could end it right here, but instead. We heard Hobbs, he said, where's Dante? He said, where's he at? And that's what we want to know, where is Dante? Oh, massive spine buster. And again, to Hobbs, he could have ended at any point, but instead picks up De La Vega in the torture rack and gets the win. The winner of this match, Powerhouse Hobbs. Direct message right to Dante Martin. You heard, you read the lips right there. Oh, powerhouse Hobbs, there's that spy buster. And then watch this, torture rack, rack him up, son. There you go, Dante Martin, that's in your future, my man. All right, powerhouse Hobbs continues to win. He has vaulted into the top five that's here Dante. in aid. What is next for powerhouse Hobbs? Dante, this is exactly what's gonna happen to you. Oh, wait a second. Hobbs, he's already beaten this man with a torture rack and now lifts him up and once again punishing Gus De La Vega in an effort to draw Dante Martin. Whoa, what, what, this Dante! Dante with a drop kick, Hobbs avoids him. Come on! And Hobbs spills the outside, Dante. No, 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 no. Takes flight over the top! The referees out to separate Dante Martin and Powerhouse Hobbs. Dante's gonna pay, I'm telling you, he's gonna pay in a big way, in a powerful way he's gonna pay. We can't wait, we cannot wait. What an explosive development here on AEW Dark. Well, a collision between Dante Martin and Powerhouse Hobbs seems inevitable. The rubber match has got to happen soon. Good night. AEW Rampage, Fridays at 10 on TNT. There we go, a little tag team action featuring the Gun Club. Austin and Colton, I love these two guys. Let's get after it. Tag team action on Dark. The following contest is a tag team match set for one ball with a 20 minute time limit. At a combined weight of 435 pounds, representing the Gun Club, Austin and Colton Gunn, the Gun Club. Gun Club and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus will collide this Friday night on Rampage. It will be Austin and Colton's first shot 
at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. And boy, are these guys ready. Their opponents already in the ring at a combined weight of 377 pounds, Liam Gray and Adrian Alanis. Taz, what's your prediction? What do you think is going to happen this Friday night on Rampage? Will we see new tag team champions? That's a tough question. Uh, I'm going to lean away from the go. Oh, the gun club, I think right now the champs have a lot of momentum. Even though, I mean, I'm a fan of Austin and Colton. Their blood brothers, the chemistry is obviously naturally there, so we're witnessing right now. Well, the gun club, we would never call them ass boys, Taz. They are in control of Liam Gray and Adrian Olanis here in the early goings. Well, it's yes, you call anyone an arse or an ass, as we say here in the States, uh, it's insulting, and it's wrong, and it's uh, improper, and it's not respectful. So I don't blame the gun club for being upset, being called assy boys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, AEW returns to Nashville next Wednesday night, February 16th, at the historic National Municipal Auditorium. And then next month, we'll be making our Columbia, South Carolina debut Wednesday, March 30th, at the Colonial Life Arena. And tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. I am over like Rover in Nashville, but I digress. Not Columbia, though. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, jeez. Austin Gunn sends Liam Gray face first with that top turnbuckle pad. I actually think there's some people in Nashville that still owe me enough money, but I'll digress on that, too. <laughs> Whoa, you... what the? Hold on a minute. Call the hotline. <laughs> Colton Gunn backing Liam Gray up into the ropes, sending him hard pillar to post. Colton looking good, baby, looking good. Yeah, Colton Gunn looking very sharp. Oh, until then, Liam Gray dives out of the corner, avoids the splash. Colton, though, made the tag out to Austin. Austin getting laid out by Adrian Alanis. Adrian heard the footsteps, lands three, four solid wow. shots on Colton Gunn, but Austin comes wow. in, gets a hey, back what? elbow. How about, how about Alanis? What? Move set, not more set. That's so different. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Gun Club with the assist. Austin floats over and scores the win. The winners of this match, the Gun Club. That was a very uh, struggle to a cover there by Austin, but he got the win. The struggle for that cover was real. But man, the guns look good going into this Friday at Rampage. Yeah, Gun Club looking sharp. They will challenge Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus in the AEW World Tag Team Championship at Rampage this Friday night, 10, 9 central on TNT. Controversial disqualification this past Friday night at Rampage. Mercedes Martinez in action. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Brass City, Connecticut, Mercedes Martinez. As Mercedes Martinez bashed Thunder Rosa with the pipe last Friday night at Rampage. And then afterwards, we found out that she is the hired muscle of the AEW Women's World Champion, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Let's throw it back down to Josh real quick. Her opponent already in the ring from Guinea, West Africa, Queen Aminata. Yeah, we saw, you know, we saw Jamie Hayter, who's aligned, obviously, the muscle with um, 
you know, with Dr. Britt Baker, the AEW Women's World Champion, she uh, was a little ticked off at Martinez. She didn't realize what was going on, that 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 the doctor sent Martini, Martinez to do the damage, but Mercedes Martinez put it on with that pipe, like you said. <laughs> On to Rosa on Rampage. Dude, that pipe came out of nowhere when it happened. Yeah, and, you know, afterwards we heard uh, Dr. Britt Baker say that she wanted Mercedes to take out Thunder Rosa and it seemed to be a bit of a misunderstanding. She wanted uh, Mercedes to hand Thunder Rosa her first loss of the new year. Instead, Mercedes just trying to split the head of Thunder Rosa as Queen Aminata Elevates and goes right into the waist lock. Oh, half and half, it got folded in half. Yeah, it was nasty right there, but Martinez is a veteran. She hit that half and half back throw really well. And oh, that kick to match up really well. This is my ring. A boot into the face of Queen Aminata. Mercedes Martinez now just overhand shots to the chest. Is driving the air out of the lungs wow. of Aminata. Well, you hear Martinez saying, this is my ring. I'm the queen of this ring. And well, right now, she's not lying, Mar Mar Mercedes. She's, she's spot on. Yeah, Mercedes looking sharp here in this match. I mean, she looked sharp last Friday night at, uh, at Rampage, Taz. Oh, no, no, I know. I totally agree with you. I've seen Martinez compete over the years, I'm sure you have too. I mean, she's, she's well respected in locker rooms worldwide, uh, in, in, female, in women's locker rooms, so, uh, you know, gotta be careful, Thunder Rosa, she's oh. not done with your cover here. Whoa, that would've been an upset. Roll up attempt by Queen Amanada, but Mercedes Martinez lands a massive spine buster. Yeah, that was a shot and a half with that spine buster. And now just raining down right hands on the head of her opponent is Mercedes Martinez. Martinez not only tough as hell and a force to be reckoned with here in AEW, but I love her cars. And look at this with the arms of Queen Aminata pinned. Mercedes just laying right hands down. Now Aminata is, is dazed, understandably so. Martinez talking a lot of trash. And that's the best time to talk trash when you got your opponent down and out. Aminata winds up, big elbow strike. Mercedes, oh, one for the boot once again. Queen Aminata blocked the lariat, hits the headbutt. Aminata staggered, so is Martinez. Queen Aminata charges in, goes for the clothesline. Mercedes, uh-oh, Fisherman's Buster just plants Queen Aminata. Mercedes Martinez hooks the leg and scores the win. The winner of this match, Mercedes Martinez. Wow, Mar Mercedes Martinez making short work of her opponent. And Taz, we know that she has been commissioned to take out Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa better watch her back. Yeah, Rosa, best beware. The good doctor has sent Martinez back at you again. I just see that photo there that I painted of Thunder Rosa. <laughs> Masterful brush strokes, Taz. That's my style, brother. There you go. We are here with Wheeler Yuta on Dark. Tremendous effort on Wednesday against John Moxley, really was. I, I, everyone saw nationwide the effort that you put in that matchup. But now coming up later tonight on Dark, one-on-one -on -one against Aaron Solo of the Factory. Tony, I, I do appreciate the, uh, the congratulations, but I think you can see how much I improved in my two matches with John Moxley, but it's not enough. It's not something tangible. It's not wins and losses. So tonight, I have a chance against Aaron Solo to take that momentum, take everything I've learned from my best friends, you know, Aaron, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll have someone out there with you. I'm going to leave my friends in the back because I'm going to show you what Wheeler Yuta can do. Wheeler Yuta coming up later on against Aaron Solo of the Factory as we go back to the ring. All right, here we go, a little one-on-one -on -one action. We got my man throwing hands all the time, Anthony Agogo. About the only guy I like in the factory, Agogo, coming at you. Yeah. So good. You know? 
The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by QT Marshall and Nick Camarado, hailing from the east of England, weighing 239 pounds, the Gupna, Anthony Agogo. Gupna, Anthony Agogo, set to compete one on one here tonight on Dark. Gogo looked sharp, looked impressive since his return to action here in AEW. Throw it back down to Dasha. His opponent from Union, New Jersey, weighing 240 pounds, Tony Vincita. But Taz, I got to ask you, QT Marshall said he is sending the factory's top student after Hook. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, I, look, I, I don't want to sit here and speak for the handsome devil hook, but he's going to handle himself just quite fine and dandy. No matter who QT brings at him, he's more than prepared. I promise you that. It's a fact. Well, Anthony and Gogo laying in a shot to the kidneys of his opponent, Tony Vincita. And now a Gogo isolating the wrist and the arm, trying to pull that shoulder out of socket. A Gogo, you know, Taz, as we've seen, through Gogo's career. Oh, look at, actually, getting countered there by Vincita. Oh, he's got a weird accent for a guy from Jersey. Who, <laughs> Anthony Gogo? No. <laughs> what the heck? Ducks underneath, has the hammerlock applied on a Gogo, but a Gogo lands that back elbow. Vincita rolls through, but a Gogo, a back breaker, and now just wrenching on the nose of his opponent. Those are things that a go, -Go couldn't do while he was boxing, wearing boxing gloves. Now you can rip a guy's nose off right here on the YouTubes. And speaking of YouTubes, we're here for AEW Dark in Universal Studios, and we'll be returning to Florida. And you could be a part of the Daily's Place experience on Wednesday, March 2nd, for the last Dynamite Before Revolution. And then Rampage will debut in Orlando, Florida on Friday, March 4th at the Edition Financial Arena. And then you can join us in the greater Fort Myers area in Estero, Florida at the Hertz Arena on Wednesday, March 9th for the fallout from Revolution. Tickets for all three events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Oh. Anthony Gogo now all over his opponent. Forearms, back elbows, just don't let him punch it. It comes a big deal, maybe not, but it's a good deal. Instead, on the hook, man. Yeah. I was going to say earlier, Taz, since the, uh, Gogo, -Go, in his AEW career, we haven't really seen him rely all that much on his boxing. I mean, sure, he uses his quickness and his power, but his, his actual punches, well, I mean, very rarely does he break those out. Nice power slam, though, by a Gogo. -Go. Yeah, well, you're right about a Gogo -Go sitting back on his boxing. He don't use it that much, which, if, if I was a competitor on the AEW roster, that would have me a little nervous. Because this guy's being this dominant by holding back his punching ability. Whenever he unleashes some punches, good luck, baby. Yeah, you know, he's got that card up his sleeve. We saw him use those punches to devastating effect last summer. But right now, Tony Vincita throwing some big overhand shots. But Gogo -Go tries to create some distance. The Bandera sends Vincita over the top rope. Tony headed up to the top missile drop kick nobody home yeah. oh, good idea by tony if that would have hit man might have had an upset that was a nice attempt at a missile drop kick but it, it didn't work Boy, go go just plants tony vincita damn you're not kidding tony got planted hard the governor looking good now anthony and go go uh oh, take it off the wrist oh, tape. Maybe thinking of a bare knuckle oh, shot no. here to Tony Vincita. Oh, God, I hope not. Oh, no, poor Tony. Oh, my God. But Gogo -Go has him all lined up and oh, the oh, right oh. hand. Wow. Oh, oh, oh man. Dude. What? Oh. A Gogo -Go drapes the oh. flag over his opponent. He knows that he's got this one in the bag. Winner of this match, Anthony Agogo. Wow, just when we talked about the so danger good. of that right hand, Anthony Agogo yeah. gave everybody a reminder right there. I heard a saying, you are not kidding. What a shot. What happens to me?
Man, we had no idea that was going to happen. And you're right, we were singing the praises of his boxing. And when he pulls out those punches, forget it. Poor Tony. He got his jaw jacked. Singles action up next here on AEW Dark. Lee Moriarty goes one on one with Anthony Henry next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, weighing 185 pounds, Lee Moriarty. Taz, I, I gotta ask your opinion on this. When on Dynamite this past Wednesday night, we heard Brian Danielson tell John Moxley that he could build something here in AEW with the likes of Lee Moriarty, Daniel Garcia, and Wheeler Yuta. His opponent already in the ring from Augusta, Georgia, weighing 195 pounds, Anthony Henry. I have no idea why Danielson did what he did in front of the whole world. If you have a game plan and some kind of a team you're trying to form and you want to sell mocks on this, why, Danielson, are you doing this in front of everybody? I, I just have to be honest with you. I was very surprised at that. But it shows the confidence of Brian Danielson and his idea. I, I mean, I think that's the key word, Taz, is confidence. Brian Danielson knows that he is an elite-level wrestler, no pun intended, that he is, he is one of the maybe five best wrestlers in the entire world. And, uh, you know, so that, that confidence, that extends to all facets of his life, including trying to get John Moxley on board with this plan that Danielson has evidently been, been thinking about. Yeah, he's put a lot of thought into it, and, and having a, a, an athlete like Lee Moriarty on your team would be a very good thing if you could pull that off for sure, and Garcia, no doubt, and Yuta. Anthony Henry popped up, Lee Moriarty. Moriarty came back with a... Arm drag, now the leg sweep and the kick to the back of the elbow. Great accuracy there on the kick by Lee Moriarty. Come here. Ah. Moriarty keeping the pressure on Anthony Henry. And now the abdominal stretch, but the arms are captured of Anthony Henry. Yeah, but that little step over the left shin helps. Well, that's why Henry got his foot out of there. So lower body helps with that any kind of Come here. abdominal stretch type of maneuver with an overhook. Now again, Moriarty. controlling that arm, you see Moriarty right there. Chop to the chest, backs off Moriarty. Another chop by Anthony Henry. Come on, Lee. Henry. Oh, Moriarty though fires back. The chop and an uppercut of his own. Nice series, nice combination of strikes there by Lee Moriarty, the reversal into the roast. Moriarty, whoa, gra grabs the leg. Oh, went for the kick to the elbow once again. Anthony Henry trying to take himself out of bounds, but Moriarty hanging on to the, to the, the wrist of Anthony Henry. His fingers, he's pulling those fingers, little joints on his fingers. Oh, boy. Oh, Moriarty got his leg kicked out from underneath him, and Anthony Henry. Spins Moriarty around. Henry. Uh oh. Moriarty's going to get his neck cranked courtesy of Anthony Henry. Wow, Henry making the most of this time. There's the neck crank. Oh, look at that. Vicious. Yeah, nasty for sure. Very nasty. Just a reminder to fans, AEW will be returning to the New England area first on Wednesday, February 23rd at the Webster Bank Arena, our debut in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And then in April, we will be making our way back to Boston on Wednesday, April 6th at the Aganis Arena. Tickets on sale this Friday, February 11th. You can get all the details at AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Yeah, that Jonas yeah. Arena right there on the campus of Boston University is a fine, fine venue, my friend. A lot of memories for me there. Lots of memories. <laughs> and also, the tickets for uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut on sale right now at AEWTIX.com. I have no memories there. <laughs> Anthony Henry now bridging back. He's got the knees, the legs. He's shredding the legs of Moriarty right here. Yeah, those legs are locked up. You're right, man. And Lee's smart to get to the ropes to break the hold. 
Well, I think that was that was Moriarty's only recourse was to get to the bottom rope. His legs were all tied up pretty tight. Anthony Henry, though, feeling confident. And a, a lazy kick to the, the thigh. That was, I think, just more to let Moriarty know, I've got you. But Moriarty comes back, uppercut to the arm. Oh, that kick. There's some force on that one. Yeah, the inside right there. See, Henry now got something in mind. Nice uh, reversal. Side, kind of a side suplex. Yeah, good, good comeback there by Lee Moriarty, trying to bring himself back into this match. Takes Anthony Henry down at the clothesline, then the high boot. But you can see Moriarty some trouble with that left knee. And Moriarty rolls Henry out. Slides around, and a big stomp from Moriarty. Near leg hook, two, no. Almost had it right there. Almost had it. Very smart, but he's not getting too fresh. Ready to stay right on him, Lee is. Oh, Henry reverses the suplex attempt, but Moriarty reverses the reversal. Henry with the roll oh, up, got Moriarty. Stuck there. Two, no. Let's counter it by, by Henry. Almost pinned, almost upset at Lee right there. Yeah, headbutt to the midsection by Moriarty. Moriarty can't get Henry up for the suplex. Takes a moment to collect himself. Now trying it again, but Anthony Henry, what a brain oh, buster. Whoa, he's got him, man. He's got him. No! Wow, that would have been something there, huh? Oof. Anthony Henry really testing Lee Moriarty here now with the stretch muffler. Stretch muffler, yeah, that stretch muffler's in nice. But Moriarty Lost rolled it. through, yep. now rolls up Henry. One, two, two no. Desperation roll up by Moriarty. He steps over Anthony Henry. Now Moriarty oh, went for the suplex once again. Henry floats behind. Wild back Ooh. elbow, but Moriarty lands a solid shot on Henry. Moriarty now, oh, just flatlines Anthony Henry. Two, three. The winner of this match, Lee Moriarty. Wow, Lee Moriarty picking up a big victory here on AEW Dark. And Ted, looks like for uh, a young Shivana is gonna try and get a word with Lee. What were you gonna say for a young man, what? True. I was gonna say for a young athlete like Lee Moriarty, no one near on the radar of somebody like the American Dragon Brian Danielson. That's gotta be a big boost to his confidence. I would assume so. I definitely would agree with you on that. You see right now Lee wanting to shake hands with uh with Henry, but Henry's like, yeah, I'm not shaking him, but Henry, obviously frustrated by the loss. Lee Moriarty, though, with the big win here on Dark. See right there, just flat face first. He flat, just drives his opponent. There's another angle right there with three different angles. Lee Moriarty gets another win here on AEW Dark. You and I have been here before, young man. I, how's that left leg, okay? Uh, I'm going to use you to hold myself up. Okay, right? you got it. Hang in there. Yeah. We have seen you with uh, great matches on Dynamite now, and there's no question. How about Lee Moriarty? This young man's star is on the way up. Congratulations on the win. That was a tough one. Thank you, Tony. What did I say the last time when we were in this ring? I said it was time for me to be consistent. I said it was time for me to focus on right now instead of the future. The competition is not getting any easier. With every match, every fight, I get stronger. I get more confident. And I find my focus. Everyone here and everyone at home, you are watching live Tiger Styles Evolution and you're watching the metamorphosis of Lee Moriarty. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone better watch their step and protect their neck. Whoa. Lee Moriarty with another win here on AEW Dark. Okay, here we go. We got ladies' action. 
The dark one is Anna J with negative one in her corner. That's right, the boss, negative one. Here we go. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Accompanied to the ring by negative one from Brunswick, Georgia, Anna J. Taz, it's, it's well documented. You grew up on the, well, I don't want to say the streets of Red Hook. I mean, I'm sure you lived in a house, but uh, you know, I yeah. mean, you kind of a, you know, kind of a house. It was a long story. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, well, well, here, let's let's let Dasha Gonzalez do the introductions for Anna Jay's opponent, and then I'll continue with my line of thinking. What a cliffhanger. And her opponent, already in the ring from Baltimore, Maryland, Casey Lennon. But, Taz, how can I help you, sir? When, when, you, when you were 10 years old, did you have a gang of adults that you could just sick on people? Man, I wish I did. <laughs> um... Really, I had uh, a friend of mine had like five um, rampant, crazy dogs, two pit bulls and three rowdies. And they used to run around. They were crazy, bro. You know, we did some stuff with them. <laughs> <laughs> nice kid, man. Huh? All right. <laughs> Yes, that's a, that's a great transition into me reminding everybody that February is American Heart Month, and AEW is proud to uh, partner with the American Heart Association their mission of ending heart disease. Check out shopaew.com for a special co-branded T-shirt with $2 of every sale going towards the American Heart Association. We hope that fans will get behind this initiative to help raise awareness and funds for this important cause. Well, Anna Jay in complete control right here. Whoa, I spoke too soon. Anna just got turned around in that corner. Casey Lennox battering Anna Jay. Negative one can't be pleased. Watching this at ringside. Oh, reversal by Anna. Anna, oh, walked into that high boot. Yeah, Lennox really brought that boot up for sure. High, real high. Oh, Anna. Oh. Damn. A very undignified landing for Casey Lennox. And now Anna, back elbow in the corner. Regular elbow strike. And now Casey Lennox sent Pillar to post. Anna comes in with that kick. I think Casey tried to block it. But Anna, no blocking that one. The dangerous Jake kick right in to the Queen Slayer. Anna's got her all tied up. And Casey Lennox with no choice other than to tap out. The winner of this match by submission, Anna J. Well, Anna J scores the win under the watchful eye of the boss man himself, negative one. Yeah, impressive victory right there. Negative one, he's got to be impressed with Anna J. How couldn't it be? That was excellent. Man, it's just a bunch of adults that listen to a 10 year old kid. What a world we live in. He's got the money. Up next here on AEW Dark from Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, it will be Fuego Del Sol going one-on-one -on -one with Sir Pentico. I'm not sure why I called out her location. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by Luther, representing Chaos Project from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 175 pounds, Serpentico! Taz, what, what, I was gonna say, what the hell is Luther wearing? Look at Luther, he's got a new, Luther's got a new blouse. I don't know, he's got a one-off Jones is kind of like a Tarzan singlet with a sleeve. It's kind of cool, actually. I am, I am stunned by this. This is what, what a development. Ah, Luther, bless his heart, man. That's cool. <laughs> well, that was a real lackluster streamer right there. I gotta be honest. Well, I was gonna say anything. I think after Hook destroyed him, he ran out of streamers. Anything is gonna be overshadowed by Luther's shirt. <laughs> And his opponent from Mobile, Alabama, weighing 176 pounds, Fuego del Sol. Fuego del Sol and Serpentico set to go one on one here tonight on AEW Dark. And as a reminder, AEW Dynamite 
will be live tomorrow night, 8, 7 central, on our new home of TBS from Atlantic City, New Jersey. We'll be making our debut in Atlantic City, and we've got a great night of action in store tomorrow. And the, it's always special when we have a world championship match on Dynamite, and tomorrow will be no exception. Hangman Adam Page defending the AEW, the world championship, against the Murderhawk monster Lance Archer in a Texas death match. Can't wait for that. Cannot wait for that. Tell you what, people in Atlantic City, they're gonna eat that up right there on the boardwalk. Gonna love it. And uh, last time we had a Texas death match in AEW, Lance v Archer was involved, and Lance Archer got the win. So, Tez, I mean, I think that bodes well for the Murderhawk Monster headed into tomorrow night. Well, the key is that Lance Archer's from Texas. So who better than him in a Texas death match? Who better? <laughs> Pop myself. Step up, here comes Rana by Fuego del Sol. Springs up to his feet. Serpentico. Ankle pick there by Serpentico. Serpentico went for the kick. Fuego up to his feet, swinging a miss. Fuego comes off the ropes with the moot salt. And now Fuego lands the kick to the side of the head. Yeah, you see right now, if you're Fuego, might be thinking some sort of a dive out here, but they're far away, Chaos Project. Fuego put on the what brakes the as, as Luther carries Serpentico out of harm's way. Very, uh, it was a very, very effective assist by, by Luther for once. It was. I feel like that blouse that Luther's wearing is something like that Georgie Animal Steel would have wore back in the day. I don't know why. Is it because Luther's bald? No, I have nothing against bald men. Well, no, I meant because Georgie Animal Steel was bald. I know he was, but he had a green tongue. Oh, watch out. Swing and a miss by Fuego. And Luther grabs the boot of Fuego del Sol, provides the opening for Serpentico. Serpentico rolls Fuego through. Oh. Big kick to the face, and the DDT spikes Fuego. Serpentico floats over. Just a two count despite Luther's protests. Also tomorrow night on... Luther's such a big man. He's got that crazy high primal screen voice. But yes, tell me about tomorrow night, Excalibur. I was going to say tomorrow night on Dynamite. We will also hear from Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, after the biggest victory of his career, defeating CM Punk last Wednesday night in Punk's hometown of Chicago. Serpentico with the cover. Just a two. Had a little business meeting over the weekend in uh, one of my cigar shacks uh, with uh, with MJF, and we had a long conversation. And he's so happy, so proud of himself for his victory. I'm so proud of him for beating that punk punk. It was so nice. Can't wait to hear MJF on Dynamite tomorrow night. Well, and Taz, I, I just got to point out, you're being modest. It's a cigar chalet. True, I am being modest. You know me, I'm a modest man. Modest That's mouse me, over there. Modest, modest mouse man. Big elbow strike. <laughs> Swinging a miss by Fuego. Fuego, though, lands on his feet. Hanging oh. neck breaker on Serpentico. Serpentico got rattled by that one. Serpentico now trying to get to his feet if he can, as is Fuego. Fuego del Sol charging in. Big uppercut. Fuego covering the distance. Spear to the midsection. And. Fuego bringing Serpentico out, went for the thrust kick. Oh, caught him in the midsection, caught him on the, the up kick, and then a hook kick across the jaw. Fuego del Sol heading up to the top rope. Oh, and again, Luther, a very opportune distraction. <laughs> He's screaming Luther out here, man. It's so loud. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Serpentico. Is he going to suplex Fuego to the floor? Wow. wow, Fuego is understandably desperate to get out of the grips of Serpentico. Both men, though, spilling to the apron. Uh-oh, man, Serpentico. oh, God. Whoa! Oh. Oh. Pile driver on the apron with one arm Serpentico's going to get the win dude. He's going to get him right now. Serpentico, Senton Atomico, he floats over, he covers, and no, what? I don't know how Del Sol kicked out right there. 
somehow Fuego Del Sol able to kick out after the pile driver and the senton. What is it? <laughs> but what is it? What is it? Sir Serpentico, oh, the Tope Suicida. But, whoa, watch out. Oh, and there goes Fuego Del Sol taking out Luther on the outside. Big thrust kick by Fuego Del Sol. And Fuego, oh, springs off, and the arm drag on the outside. And Fuego. Tornado what DDT impact. on the floor. He just Whoa. planted Serpentico. Crazy impact Come right on, there. And Serpentico is in serious trouble. Fuego Del Sol comes off the back, the double foot stops to the back of the head. Fuego, one, two, three. Dasha Gonzalez is getting a cup of coffee from Taz's coffee maker. Yeah. She's huh. a, little, a little late on the, <laughs> the announcement, but Fuego, look at this, the swinging DDT on the floor. That was the beginning of the end for Serpentico. Yeah, that double stomps to the back of the head, and Fuego do Sol picks up the victory. It wasn't easy, but man, what a match by these two guys. Great back and forth battle, and an even better victory for that man, Fuego del Sol. Coming out to my custom theme song tonight for Dark was very cool, especially because I didn't know I was coming out to that song. So to hear it and be able to react that way, it added a little bit of extra to experience it in that way. While walking to the ring, it's a different feeling because I feel the most like myself when I'm near a wrestling true. ring. Yo. Enterprise and Tiger Stalin. I need to I feel this way because music is a very big part of who I am as a person and as a wrestler. I come out with the headphones because they help me meditate before my matches. It helps me keep center and focus, much like my mask. These are all parts of me that make me who I am. They make me unique. So that's why it's very important and it's very special for me to have this song tonight on Dark. My song's name is Tiger Stalin, and I collaborated with True God and Shokus Apollo on this. They're very introspective artists with their music and their lyrics. It allows me to think deeper about who I am and who I want to be, and I'm very glad that I got to work with these two artists on my song. The song came about when I was approached about making a track about my story in my life. Growing up in a hardworking city like Pittsburgh, a city of champions, a still city, I was born with a work ethic. My family, hardworking people, both my mom, my dad, everyone, they did everything they could to make sure that I had a good life and I could pursue what I wanted. As an artist, outside of the ring as well, I'm a graphic designer and a visual artist. One of the things that I don't have skill in is music. I'm glad I had the opportunity to have help to express myself in a more musically way instead of a visual way. When people hear this track, I want them to understand who I am as a mind. I have a lot of energy when I come to the ring. I smile a lot, I have a good time, but there's a deeper thinking to everything I do, much like my inspiration, Bruce Lee. Everybody knows him as the fighter, the actor, and all these things, but there's layers to who he is, and there's layers to who I am. Who we are means a lot to me and everyone else in the locker room because it's an opportunity for us to express ourselves more than just what we're perceived when you just see us on TV. There's much more to every single person in that ring, and to do this during Black History month is that much more special. It's important to give back because in professional wrestling, it's a gift. Every second we have in this ring is a gift. No one in professional wrestling is entitled to anything, and honestly, we're living our dreams. So any opportunity we have to give back, we're going to make the most of that. You can get the Who We Are album on shopaew.com, and all the proceeds will go to the Pussy Collins Foundation, a foundation that's made for inspiring and helping young individuals grow as individuals, grow as artists, grow as people, and, you know, chase their dreams. Main event time here on AEW Dark. Wheeler Yuta takes on Aaron Solo of the Factory, and QT Marshall will be lurking at ringside. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. 
accompanied to the ring by QT Marshall, representing the factory. From South San Francisco, California, weighing 196 pounds, Aaron Solo. QT Marshall, Taz, I gotta ask you, he's been sticking his nose in a lot of people's business, not only with Hook, but uh, you know we saw it last week with a Dark Order, and we've seen it in the past with the best friends. What's QT's deal, man? I don't know. I don't know what his problem is. Uh, I don't really give a rat's ass about anybody else, except for Hook, obviously, uh, as far as QT's dealings. Uh, but uh, you know what? QT's best beware. The best beware, including his fancy dance student that's coming to Rampage to fix Hook. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 199 pounds, Wheeler. And QT's main man, Aaron Solo, better be wearing this guy right now uh, in Utah. Yeah, Wheeler Yuta, we saw that last Wednesday night on Dynamite. And uh, even though he was not victorious, an incredible outing against John Moxley, a former AEW world champion. A, a really a huge difference from their first match last year. Yeah, no, no, I agree completely. Definitely was a hell of a show, showing for you that sometimes even in defeat you could have a great outing, and we witnessed that when you defaced the Mox. Right now, and that's nice. QT Marshall. That poor guy. I feel bad for that, him sometimes. I do. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a giving man. I'm a soulful man. You know what I mean? I'm a humble man. And I, you're a nice I am, guy. And it hurts me so much when I see my son just suplexing QT all over the stage. It's tough. Does the walk over Jones? It's rough. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you know that you're, you know, un underneath the the the, the hard exterior, yeah. you're you still you got a soft heart. I'm, I'm like a lamb. Are you kidding me? I'm like a damn lamb. <laughs> All right, here we go. Rear chin lock by the unit. <laughs> Wheeler Yuta with the chin lock changes up the grip to put a little extra pressure on it. Hand fighting there I by think Solo. The sound of a billy goat actually. It wasn't a lamb. Goes land. behind the hammerlock side. It's more of a billy goat sound. Yeah, he's got the head, the head and the wrist. Well, now he's just got the wrist, a solo. You can order your limited edition Street Fighter AEW collaboration T-shirt featuring Darby Allen, Brian Danielson, or Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. T-shirts available for a limited time. Reorders right now at shopaew.com. Nice lateral press there by Yuta. Just a two count. Yeah, it kicks so oh, look at QT Marshall. Come on, QT. Hops up on the apron. Yuta took his eye off the ball for a moment, and Solo whips him throat first into that middle rope. <laughs> Referee Remsburg. What's up, Remsburg, the ref? I mean, listen, this question, he's from Jersey, just like you, Remsburg. You can't get QT off the apron? Uh, Bryce is from Pennsylvania. Same thing. <laughs> I've drawn money all over that, those states, bro. Please. Kidding me? Well, Taz, you know what? We'll be in... New Jersey tomorrow night for AEW Dynamite. Yeah. Live at 8, 7 Central on TBS. Could be awesome. Can't wait. Atlantic City's a great rest of town. Oh, we got a lot of folks coming in from all different parts of Jersey. Uh, people from Philadelphia coming in there. We get a lot of people from different parts of uh, Northeast uh, Pennsylvania. Beautiful state, Pennsylvania. <laughs> we got Two Face Jones over here. Oh, a nice back <laughs> suplex by Aaron Solo. Near leg hooked, but Wheeler Yuta able to kick out. Solo's like, what do I got to do here? You know, Yuta's shown that, that toughness again, kicking out of the stuff. And Solo hammering Wheeler Yuta. That elbow to the side of the head. Snap, suplex, Solo. Taking Yuta over the top, making it look easy. Yeah, Solo basically saying easy pickings right now. Perfect suplex. Taz, we, you know, we talked about Wheeler Yuta's match with John Moxley last Wednesday night. What about what happened after the match? Brian Danielson comes to the ring, offers John Moxley uh, an alliance, a partnership, and name drops Wheeler Yuta, among others, as possible recruits. Well, well, wait a minute. Well, 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 we talked about it earlier. You know, I just thought I was a little confused on why yeah, Danielson would, would do that. Just get down fast. You know, but but again, it shows the confidence of Danielson and oh, his idea of what he wanted to pitch oh, towards Mox. Aaron Solo bringing Yuta up, and Yuta lands on his feet, ducks under the clothesline, comes around with the Tijeras. No, instead. 
steps over uh, the arm, and now, look at this, the Manjigatami, Flying Octopus Hold locked in. He's got, digging that point of the elbow into the rib cage of Aaron Solo. Yeah, you can get a submission victory with a hold like this. QT realizes that he's worried. Oh, roll up, two, no. Solo up to the corner, Yuta charges in. Oh, nobody home. Rough landing for Wheeler. Yuta and a big shot from the outside by QT Marshall. Well, like it or not, that was great timing right there by QT. Here's a couple. Just a two count for Aaron Solo after the interference behind the referee's back by QT Marshall. Solo again, she's a little bit uh, frustrated here. Can't, can't get a, the win over Yuta. It's not going to be easy, buddy. Yuta now just in the center of the ring. Aaron Solo cranking back on the head and neck. Yuta trying to get his feet underneath him, trying to get back up to a vertical base, delivers the elbows. Two, three elbows to the midsection of Aaron Solo. Well, Solo through, but Solo big right elbow strike, but Yuta desperation lariat right there. Yeah, big time short lariat. It hit its mark. Solo got lit up. Manhattan drop, step up Enzigiri by Wheeler Yuta, charging into the corner there. It's the shot in the corner, slides through the top and middle rope, and Yuta, big diving elbow strike, takes out Aaron Solo. And QT Marshall, he's got a concerned look on his face. Oh, Yuta, tope suicida. Wow, he just completely destroyed Aaron Solo there. Yuta taking a big risk, but it worked. QT Marshall does not like what he is seeing. Things not going well for the factory here in our main event on AEW Dark. Yuta, uh oh, Yuta telegraphed it and Solo took advantage. Solo, both legs hooked. No. Not enough right there, not enough. Good kick out by Yuta, but Solo, that suplex really hit its mark. QT Marshall trying to urge on. Aaron Solo and Yuta. Well, it's the motivator. Trying to shake out the cobwebs. QT's a horrible motivator. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, just ask Hook. Yeah, exactly. Hook never liked him. Never, ever. First day of wrestling camp, training, just didn't go well, bro. I can just tell you that. <laughs> it was all downhill from there. Yeah, buddy. People got Big. stretched. Big story. Well, let us. Series of elbow strikes, Yuta. Pouring out the pressure, corkscrew kick by Aaron Solo. Yuta hangs on to the bottom rope, ducks underneath. German suplex. Yuta with the release. Trying to get his feet underneath him. He does. And now Wheeler Yuta charges in. The Bandera sends Yuta out to the apron. And QT Marshall trying to grab the boot of Wheeler Yuta. But Aaron Solo landed the shot. No, Yuta, look at this, rolls him up. Cradle. Oh. Got Solo all up, tied up in the seatbelt, and he scores the win. The winner of this match, Wheeler Utah. Wow, Wheeler Utah overcoming the odds to score the victory here tonight in our main event on Dark. Oh, and, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Nick Camarado coming to the ringside area to get right in the face of Utah. Aaron Solo got a three on one situation. Oh, oh, Camarado just ran over Wheeler Yuta. What a shot. But QT saying, you're not done yet. Nick Camarado is looking to destroy Wheeler Yuta under QT Marshall's orders. Factory playing for keeps here. Oh, Orange Cassie, we've seen QT Marshall have his share of issues with Orange Cassidy over the past few weeks here. And, oh, Aaron Solo. <laughs> oh, Nick Camarado to the outside. Both factory members a little too overzealous and they're leaving their boss one on one with Orange Cassidy. Oh, watch out. QT was looking for a cheap shot. And, even out QT Marshall 
bailing out. He wants no part of Orange Cassidy. Well, the fact we live in a fight another day, I guess. Yeah, something tells me these issues between Orange Cassidy, Wheeler Yuta, and the factory are far from over. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. For myself, Excalibur, for Taz, we hope to see you tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TBS for AEW Dynamite. Tomorrow on TBS, we could run this place. Don't miss the dynamite that could change everything. Inner Circle team meeting attendance is mandatory. Featuring Lance Archer versus world champion Hangman Page. It's going to be a Texas death match. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS.